you know what they say, third time is the charm. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I am doing awesome. It's, uh, man, springtime's getting here. That means football spring practice also means baseball, also means softball and March Madness. So we're on the verge of a lot of madness. What are you, the spring spokesman? I mean, (laughs) it's like, like really, this has been a public service announcement brought to you by spring. Um, I should be, next time I should do it dressed like a robin. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you for making us your first listen. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. I'll talk about FanDuel here in just a few minutes. Jimmy, Kevin Steele has been named the defensive coordinator at Alabama for his third stint at Alabama. It has been met with um, mixed reviews. I am okay with it. It would it would it have been my first choice? No. Um, would it have been my last choice? No. Um, uh, where in the gray area would it fall? Uh, I would say probably it's somewhere in the realm of, uh, I would rather have him than not have him. Now, that's all I can say. <laughs> I think Kevin Steele is fine. I think if we're going to, um, again, we need help with linebackers. He seems like a helping linebacker kind of guy. I think we need to be a little tougher on defense. He is definitely a hard-nosed dude. And I think there's a lot to be excited about and less to be unexcited about. So it's not exactly a home run, but I think it's a stand-up double. Well, if you're limiting the pool of candidates to guys who have worked for Nick Saban in the past on on his defense, I mean, that's the only – uh, hires Nick Saban's ever made on the defensive work for, for him, uh, worked in his scheme that have run the Nick Saban defense. Uh, if you're limiting yourself to that pool, and Nick Saban does, by all accounts, uh, this is a great result. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about it, uh, excited in the sense that, I mean, the, 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 it, it feels to me like this could have gone worse, <laughs> and, and Kevin Steele is not bad. I'm, I'm telling you what Kevin Steele did, at Auburn's unbelievable. Let's go over these numbers that I'm stealing from my, my, my pal Clint Lamb, who Clint Lamb from Bam Insider did this work, uh, a lot of work, to come up with these numbers, and it's stunning. And if this doesn't excite you, I mean, it, you know, in terms of what Alabama's accomplished recruiting-wise and everything else, but when Kevin Steele was at Auburn and, 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 ha- and was good defensively five straight seasons, that entire time he was at Auburn, he coached seven defensive players – who were ranked among the top 100 prospects over that whole five years he was there at Auburn, seven. When he was at Clemson, he became the defensive coordinator at Clemson when he left Alabama in 2009. He was at Clemson, I think, for about three seasons. Those defenses he coached at Clemson, the whole time he was there, he coached seven guys. Again, the same amount he had at Auburn, seven over three years at Clemson, only seven top 100 players. He went to LSU for one season in 2015. During the one season he was the coordinator at LSU, he had a total, went up because LSU recruits well. They had 11 on that team in 2015. He had 11 guys, 11 defenders on his defense that were among the top 100 prospects. This season alone at Alabama, he has 36. 36. That's just stunning. And it just goes to show you that Kevin Steele maybe had not always been consistent and always hadn't always been great. He ain't never had players like he's going to have this fall and, and, and the falls going forward. Uh, and that's what's exciting. This is Kevin Steele's first real chance to coach nothing but stars on defense or guys with high end talent. So that, that's one more reason to get excited about this hire. And, and again, that is um, 
some some people can can certainly view it that way, and I do. I do. I can see where where others um, again are not blown away for some some obvious reasons, and I think that that argument is very similar to what we get when we talk about Tommy Rees being named offensive coordinator. Is he's got more toys in the toy box to work with than he had at Notre Dame, and so if you don't judge him solely based on numbers from Notre Dame or, or Kevin Steele numbers from wherever understand that he's going to have more to work with. And I, I think that that's very fair too. Again, I'm not trying to sell this as best case scenario. I, I clearly think this was not best case scenario from a fan's perspective, from Nick Saban's perspective. Maybe it was, maybe this is exactly who he wanted. I don't know. But um, from a fan's perspective, clearly it was not best case scenario. But I'll say this, it definitely isn't worst case scenario either. It is not a sign that the dynasty is, is crumbled. Nothing like that. Uh, some of the things I've seen uh, just so over the top um, about how, boy, Saban got down to his fifth choice or whatever. I mean, it's, not it's just not right. Um, and uh, I feel like these two guys can be good, but I'm not going to sit here and try and sell you on the fact that I think this was the the best possible outcome. That's that's all I'm saying, and I think it's fair to say let's take a wait and see approach. We we still have a ton of talent, so and we still got Nick Saban. So let's just let's ease up on the dynasty is dead talk. <laughs> well, I would have liked to have seen Jeremy Pruitt hired on defense. I think if I speak for most Alabama fans, that'd have been great if you'd hired Jeremy Pruitt. But look, it, it just it just couldn't happen. I, I do think there was a, a significant effort to make it happen. So do you know who all Nick Saban would have had to talk to for that to happen? This isn't a one call thing. This is multiple meetings with Alabama's compliance and athletic department officials, and even the university president. Then it was calls to the NCA and their lawyers and their counsel calls to Tennessee and their compliance and their counsel calls to the sec talks with Greg Sankey. I mean, all sorts of things that all these calls with all these lawyers calling every NCA expert in the country going, if we hire Jeremy Pruitt, what is our worst case scenario? What, what could happen to us? And Nick Saban had probably, I'm not kidding, probably hundred, a hundred calls or more, a hundred meetings or more about, how possible this was and what the possible ramifications were. And then he made a decision. So don't be the guy that's just sitting at your keyboard who hadn't made one call, who hadn't talked to anybody of any importance in the process whatsoever. And now you've got a better opinion than Nick Saban does about how, what the ramifications were. Uh, that That's one thing that, that gets to me is this extensive vetting with dozens of actual experts in the field and private conversations and advice that took place. Yet some dude behind a keyboard that's had none of those calls and none of this experience, he knows better than Nick. Uh, that's, that, 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 that's infuriating, frankly. Uh, and man, you can tell how mad Jimmy is. He's so mad. He can only put one of his earbuds in. <laughs> I just, I just don't like how it looks with it. I'm going to get a headset again. I'm, I'm, go, I'm, I'm going with this more fan. I got real audio and equipment now. And You uh, look like the world's worst secret service agent. <laughs> All right. I know who the world I can tell a story. I tell the, the – it's pretty funny. I was at a uh, – you know, we, we tell awesome stories here. Here's, here's an, I was at this function. I won't even say what state it was. I didn't know it was not Alabama. I was in this function, and the governor of that state was there, and uh, – I think it's the closest I've ever been to a governor at a, at a kind of an official function. My wife and I, we were like 15 feet away from, from the governor of the state. And he had his version of secret service all over. I mean, you know, they're, they're secret service guys and they're governors. So I know it's not secret service, but the same thing. And they're in their suits and they're in their fancy little uh, earpieces and they got their mics and it looks just like a movie. And, and there's 10 or 12 of these guys stationed all over, including one very close to us. It was basically the only guy between uh, my wife and I and, and this governor. And so we're watching and we're sort of amazed because we'd never seen this happen before. And he was standing there so professional. But this uh, girl 
who was serving like hors d'oeuvres, you know, walking around with hors d'oeuvres. She had these fancy hors d'oeuvres. This girl's walking around. She may have thought the Secret Service guy was cute or something. I don't know. But the governor is just about to talk and the governor's standing there and she walks right up to the Secret Service guy with this plate of food. And she was real good looking. I mean, this was this was a 10, you know, and she walked right up to this guy and says, oh, would you like something to eat? This guy takes off his earpiece. He takes off his mic. He takes off everything with this big smile on his face and flirting back to this girl. And my wife and I, we were watching this happen together and we looked right at each other and I said, and that's how you killed the president. <laughs> Jimmy, good okay. looking women are undefeated. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's just the way you yeah. do it, man. That's the way you do it. Uh, I need to tell everybody about Built Bar. Uh, look, Built Bars are awesome. I just sent a bunch to my son who is a Built Bar fanatic and an MMA fanatic and a workout warrior. And he loves these things. If you're looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, got to try Built Bar. We just got through the days. And I know my goal is to eat a little healthy this year. I hadn't always stuffed. I just had a peppermint shake from uh, Chick-fil-A, if that tells you how things are going. But you got to try Built. I like Built every night again because if I can have a Built bar, then I can have my peppermint shake later on and I don't just get completely chunked up. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. I'm telling you the truth. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Not screwing around chocolate, real chocolate. None of that fake junk. Um, if you're close to a Sam's Club, you can run in and get some. If you're close to a Walmart, you can run in and get some. You can also get them on Amazon. Or you can go to Built.com and go get them. Built bars are absolutely fantastic. Go to Built.com, go to Walmart, go to Sam's Club, wherever you got to go to get your Built bars. Go to Lifetime Fitness and get them. Wherever you got to go, that's what you want. Built bars are delicious, nutritious, and scrump delicious. Just go check them out. Built.com. All right, Jimmy. Um, <clears throat> Martavius Collins. One of Alabama's commitments or former commitments, I should say, for next year has decommitted. Um, this just broke. I was looking on uh, Bama online and, and they say that um, this is uh, they, they call it technically mutual parting of the ways. But the way that they're phrasing it makes it almost sound like Alabama said, yeah, we, we just need to do go in another direction. I don't know why. I don't know the ins and outs. Maybe you know a little something. Um, but what about this? Uh, I'm not surprised. I think it's kind of funny that uh, the second after Alabama hires an offensive coordinator who almost specializes in featuring tight ends and the first person that decommits is a tight end. That's kind of funny. You'd think they would be lining up and, and maybe, like I said, a, a BOL says a mutual parting of the ways, then, then that, that means that's code for Alabama's not, not upset about this, so you shouldn't be either. Um, I thought, first of all, I like Collins, and I do think he's a good prospect. This is a good prospect. He is good. But he also sort of fits the profile for what, what I, I call like, was it so necessary to take that commitment that early? I mean, are we sure – of all the tight ends out there, coast to coast, that we want to marry this guy. No one that you're not going to sign more than two, two in a class. Are you already taking up? A, I mean, it's so long till signing day when we took him. The other commitments to me made more sense to me. So uh, I'm learning this as you're, as you're saying. You must have just looked it up as, as we're. Uh, this this is news to me, uh, but I'm also not not surprised nor do I have a negative reaction to it at all. It's almost sort of a non-story to me. If Alabama decides that, that Collins is the right way to go, there's a lot of time to fix this. Uh, but most likely, I think Alabama's just going to look at other tight ends. Keep in mind, Tommy Reese, uh, who, who is quite involved in recruiting at Notre Dame, uh, he's showing up with, a, I, I would say, to some extent, a new list of kids that he's interested in uh, in his offense or, or – or, you know, guys that he would want to add to Alabama. So I'm not surprised, and I do not have a negative reaction to that story. I mean, I, I'm with you. Um, and, and I think that, um, look, I think there probably are going to be some better tight end options, but it, it just begs the question, why did we take the Why did we take him? And, and, and I, agree. I, mean, I watch the tape, and here's the thing. He's sort of a throwback, which is sort of – I mean, this is a blocking tight end. This is a guy who's a block first guy. 
And I think we could use that. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about the block first guy, but you also just brought in Dupree from Maryland. He actually has two years of eligibility, uh, you know, cause he could have a COVID year next year. Uh, he's a block first guy too. Uh, you just signed Ty Lockwood. I think who's got a chance to be both. I think Ty Lockwood might be one of these rare guys who's really good at blocking and pass catching, but he probably needs a year or two to get bigger. Collins is already big. There was some talk, Luke, when we took Collins, that he was actually a future offensive lineman. Oh, God. And, and, and that he wouldn't stick it tight. And there was some guys going to be 290 and be, a, be an offensive lineman. So I, I, I think calling a timeout and re – uh, reevaluating Martavius Collins is probably a good idea. Now, sometimes, and I'm not saying that's what happened here. Again, I don't know. This, this is news to me, broken to you by Bama Online and, and Luke Robinson. Uh, I, I do think that there's a good possibility that that uh, you know that you kind of relook at everything that you're doing on offense and who you're you're recruiting right now. Uh, in terms of, hey, there, this is going to be probably not a Lane Kiffin level change, but to some extent a change in what we're doing on on offense. So you might want to be looking at everything. And, and another point could be this could be off the field too. Sometimes something happens off the field and we don't hear about it because if it's not an arrest or something public, then then how would you hear about it really? But it could be an off the field thing that made Alabama go, hey, you know what, we, we might need to look around. Yeah, it's funny you say that. My first thought was if, when you said maybe it's an off-the-field thing, and we're not saying that's what it is, but here's a hypothetical. If a kid is does have a reputation or you found out something off the field that troubles you and you want to get out of a commitment or you quit recruiting him or whatever, uh, it benefits twofold to not make a big stink about that. Number one, you certainly don't want to do it because then you get a reputation for throwing kids under the bus. Number two, if he's a risk, why would you want to let your enemies know that he's a risk when they can take the risk and then he may, you know, screw them up somehow? Again, that, that's a horrible way to think, but that's a way that I think uh, it I, probably the way college sports goes these days, right? I mean, if you're a – This kid, and by the way, I think he was at Auburn's junior day this past Saturday or Saturday before. He just recently visited Auburn. Most likely, if we had a bet on what happened, he went and visited Auburn. He likes Auburn. He calls whoever's recruiting him at Alabama and says, hey, you know what? Uh, I enjoyed that trip to Auburn. I think I committed too early. I want to go on a bunch of these trips, and, and I don't want to be dishonest with you guys, and, and I'd like to go on a bunch of these trips. What do you think? And if we love the kid to death, we'd say, no, 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 no. We don't want you to go to any of these visits. We want to get – let's get married. Let's. It's just me and you against the world. Let's Don't do this. But instead, Alabama probably went, hey, you know what? Let's uh, maybe we both need to uh, reevaluate here. Yeah, Alabama. Yeah. Mart Martavius Collins calls, you know, I'm thinking um, about seeing other people and, and visiting other places. And Alabama returns, we're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. We're pregnant. We're pre you can't. It sounds to me more like, and the reality was Alabama's like, we will, we've already been seeing other people. <laughs> yeah, Alabama was like, ooh, this is too much of a coincidence. <laughs> um, all right. I need to tell everybody about FanDuel. Uh, really excited about our new sports betting partner here at Locked On. They're the number one sports book in America, mm -hmm. FanDuel. You've heard about them. You know about them. They're a deal. They're awesome. Official sports book of the NFL, which, again, that is awesome. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score a touchdown or who will score a touchdown first or whatever. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Best of all, you can get paid instantly. That is a big deal. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Also want to encourage everybody to go check out Locked On College Basketball. We're about to talk about some college basketball. And Locked On College Basketball, that's all we talk about is college basketball. Locked On College Basketball is right there in the name, college basketball. Jimmy, um, Alabama will be taking on Florida this Wednesday. And um, the, as of this very moment, while I'm trying to type in AP poll basketball to see if, if anything has – if the AP poll is out um, – uh, I don't believe that the new AP poll is out. I'm about to find out. And the answer is I still don't know because it doesn't tell me when this was updating. So 
Um, <laughs> actually, Purdue it is, is a still number one. Oh, Purdue it's, is it's, one. Just look which, by the way, Purdue is, is one. Fun. Purdue is one. I'm fine with that. Fine with it. Look, they lost at a hostile environment in Indiana. They lost at home to Rutgers a gazillion years ago, and that's it. Houston at two. I'm fine with that. They're 22 and two. Alabama at three, 20 and three. I'm fine with that. Let me tell you why. Number one, I'm fine just being three. It gives us some chance to move up. And here's the other thing. Auburn is like O of 19 of their last games against number one and number two teams in the country. And I didn't want to be the team that broke that streak in case we lose to them Saturday. So that streak is going to be alive and well um, if even if they beat us. Arizona's four. Uh, Texas five. Tennessee goes back to six. But, um, yeah, overall uh, – you know, really, really happy with still being number three. We actually move up a spot to number three, so that's good. Um, thrilled with it, happy with it, and we got Florida this week. I watched Florida play. Colin Castleton owned Oscar Sheeway, I thought, this week uh, in that game Saturday night. But I feel like we should take care of business against Florida. The one thing that is just, again, this is dumb schedule luck for Auburn. They're going to have an extra day. They play at Texas A&M on Tuesday. It's clock at night. We play Wednesday. And then we play them at Auburn on Saturday. And so they they get an extra day. Is that a big deal? I don't know. It sort of helps them with travel, I guess. Um, but that's going to be a tough game. But I feel like uh, Alabama does have a puncher's chance to go 2-0 and this week. They do. Uh, they can beat Auburn because Auburn sometimes struggles to score. And uh, Alabama usually does not. Um, I think, you know, it's going to be, I think, a low-scoring defensive game at Auburn on Saturday, uh, got to beat Florida first and get to 11-0. and So few Alabama teams have ever just sat there 11-0 and in the league. So impressive to do. That would be a tough matchup because Castleton's a tough matchup. Alabama has struggled with uh, highly talented big men, has been kind of one of our kryptonites this, uh, this season. So that will be the challenge for Wednesday, dealing with Colin Castleton. Uh, a lot will be on Clowney there. Uh, a lot will be on Betty Ako there. Um, and, and, and Gurley off the bench, Pringle off the bench. Let's see how they do against Colin, who's, you know, a real talent. I mean, slam dunk first team all SEC. Uh, and then Auburn, boy, the, you know, it will, will be probably the most fun matchup of, of the season, if not maybe the home game we have against Auburn later. Uh, the Pearl Oats matchup is great. Two great coaches, uh, two really good teams. Game day is going to be there. Uh, it'll be sort of – it'll feel like kind of the zenith of the season. I mean, in terms of uh, the biggest game or, or the big game feel to it, uh, there'll be a postseason feel to that game uh, that'll be fun. And, hey, uh, you know, really what Alabama needs to do to win the SEC, in my opinion, Luke, is split with Auburn one and one. You're, you're, you go one and one against Auburn, you still got a really good chance to win the SEC. And, of course, uh, any win over Auburn is going to help you. They have a pretty good net. Uh, score because of, of 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 how their season has has gone. You know, it's a good team, no doubt. Broom and uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Wendell Green, a lot of good players. But I'm uh, uh let, let let's deal with Florida first. You can't overlook them. Florida, maybe they don't have the best record, but Florida is real competitive in every game. It's like has Florida been blown out by anybody? I mean, they're 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 very good. All right. I, I got this is not Alabama. I guess it can be because, you know, hopefully we end up playing them for the national championship. But, you know, I watched Purdue the other day and Zach Eady is just a, an absolute. He's he's a more offensively gifted Mark Eaton for those who remember Mark wow. Eaton from back in his wow. days at, with the Utah Jazz. Utah he was Jazz. a gigantor human being. And um, I'm looking at a mock draft. Zach Eady's not in the mock draft. He's seven four. And he doesn't fall down every time he takes two steps. How is that not somebody you draft? I don't know. I don't see Oscar Shibwe high on N NBA draft, uh, you know, projections either. And that blows me away. Like, like what's the knock? I guess he's a couple inches shorter, but I don't know. I, I assume the Purdue guy would be like super high. I know nothing. But he's not in. He's Obviously, not even it's an like athleticism. Second round stuff. I mean, Brandon Miller is going. And in the you know top two, top three, I'm looking at that was NBA Draft.net. Now um, I'm looking at ESPN from just the other day. 
they don't have Zach Eady at all. So are you telling me Zach Eady's going to be back for another year at Purdue next year? You know, Drew Timmy has never been projected very high either. I, I guess without knowing anything, and I'm no NBA draft expert or NBA scout, I'm assuming this is some sort of knock on his athleticism. I mean, that's the only thing I can explain is they must not like him athletically. He's seven four. I know. Oh, I would take him. I'm drafting him. When he walks in the gym, why don't you go, I want him. That's my guy. That him. I, I pick first. You can have the next two. I mean, did watching him against Indiana, it was like watching – a high school senior play against middle yeah. schoolers. It yeah, just I watched a lot bananas. of that game. I watched a lot of that yeah. game. He's he's a force. I mean, he's just a force, and a, it's going to be an extremely tough matchup for us. I mean, that that's oh yeah. He's going to he'd be a problem for Alabama. He's a problem for everybody. You know, that's another exactly. frustrating thing. If I can, we don't have time for a rant, but about the most frustrating thing possible is when you read things that say stuff like. Uh, Boy, Alabama just doesn't match up with this other team's Heisman winning dual threat quarterback. <laughs> That's our kryptonite. Yeah, no, no doo doo. No doo doo. Yeah, yeah. You know, we way, do to have clean, a tough, way to clean the pot up. Uh, just about with, with the other word because that, 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 that argument is so dumb. Just like the argument I see all the time. Yeah, yeah, he's good. But then when you play somebody really good, then, then we don't look so great. Yeah, that's called sports. We're not going to look as, as we do against Middle Tennessee. Y'all, if y'all want to keep pushing Jimmy's butt, he's going to put I both ear pods in. Y'all watch it. <laughs> I'm um, not doing that. Just, it, just a, I don't like these things. All right. That's going to do it for today's podcast. Thank you guys so much. We'll be back tomorrow. And until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight.